Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I actually know it all or not. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe in the uh, comments below, and by all means, make sure you leave me some comments because that's where I get my questions. My wife ferrets them out. She sticks them on a piece of paper. <laughs> I read the piece of paper and I answer and see if I know. So let's get right to it and see what we got for today. Drum roll. Right. What is, okay, what is an escapement? Okay, so that's very vague and also very, very specific. Um, it's also a bit of a softball for me. <laughs> because, as it turns out, I happen to wear automatic watches. So this is actually a lovely little micro brand, the Zelos uh, Swordfish. 300 meter diver which is really awesome so anyway as it happens I actually know exactly what an escapement is so an escapement is in a clock or a watch it's the way that the energy is distributed from the power supply whatever that might be to the um, hands of the watch or clock and it's the regulator for how quickly it does that right so if you have a one hertz escapement like maybe a grandfather clock or something it might be one tick per second um, with a watch like this i believe this guy is seven i believe it's seven a second right so it's seven hertz so it's going tick 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 tick, tick seven times a second um I could be wrong, it might be five. <laughs> anyway, I don't remember right off the top of my head, but hey, anyway. So I'm gonna have to put up graphics to help explain this, I'm sure, so look for those. I will add them in uh, when I go into post-production for this. But anyway, an escapement is basically uh, the, the traditional escapement, which I think was invented by Thomas Mudge in the late 1700s, if I'm remembering correctly. So it's quite old. Uh, what it does is it takes the the powertrain, which is actually just a spring wound up, or in the case of like a grandfather clock, it's actually gravity pulling down a, a heavy weight or something. Um, and what it does is it it has like this what's called a pallet, um, and the pallet like kind of ticks back and forth like this, and a gear rotates through the pallet. I'm doing a terrible job with my hands. Like I said, I will put up a picture of this, which will make much more sense. But anyway, there's like a whole gear thing, and what happens is the gear moves like this, and then. The, there's a the the spring that actually is the uh, the hairspring that actually goes back and forth that keeps the timing and that's like kind of I guess the most critical part of a watch a mechanical watch is that because exactly how fast that goes back and forth is exactly how fast the thing's going to go but anyway as the spring comes around there's a little jewel most often um, I, it's, I've always thought it was ruby because it was red but I believe it's actually a red sapphire anyway it's 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 um it's grown in a lab it's not like they go out and mine it someplace so they grow these things in a lab and then they cut them to the right shape but anyway it comes through and it hits the back end of the uh, pallet fork and it goes whack and it hits it and it moves this thing out of the way which allows the gear to like fall like this so this gear is like spinning like this and it falls one tick uh, over to here and it gets locked into the other side of the pallet fork and on the back end there's like two little um, posts that are sticking up which keep the pallet fork from you know just spinning around like crazy and, and going out of control uh, anyway <laughs> again hopefully the graphics will make this much 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 clearer than what I'm doing with my hands uh, but anyway so what happens is the gear goes click 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 and the pallet keeps going back and forth and the hairspring that's connected to this um, little ruby pusher this little pallet thing goes like this back and forth and it keeps knocking the pallet forth back and forth and as it goes the gears are pushing the pallet fork but then also what happens is so the gears push the pallet fork which then gives a little shove to the spring the hairspring which provides power so the spring is over here and it's unwinding its power and then that's going to this gear and the gear is pushing this pallet fork back and forth and it pushes it and that pushes the spring and that causes the spring the the hairspring to go around and then the as it goes around it goes thunk, and it hits it back and it causes the pallet to like pop to the next position so it's doing that uh usually with a watch like four to up to like 10 times a second i think the zenith el primero goes like 10 hertz it's like 10 10 beats per second because they advertise that you can actually run their chronograph on there and you can actually see tenths of a second and so forth and i think they even have hundreds of a second but it's kind of a cheat how they do that um this is quite different than a quartz watch so i i really don't think you could call a quartz watch an escapement what it has is a counter um, so it's it's kind of a similar thing, right? So in a mechanical watch, there's a spring that rotates back and forth 
and it does it, let's just say, you know, five times a second, right? So it's going click, 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 click. And every five of those, the second hand moves one second and it goes around. And then there's gears that like one sixtieth of that is for minutes. And then one sixtieth of that is for hours. And that's how all the, the lovely hands on this guy. So you can see that like moving around right there, right? Um, so anyway, that's how the hands actually move on a mechanical watch. And it's all tied into spring, which is going back and forth and another spring that's providing the power. In a quartz watch, for example, let's see, ah, my lovely scuba diving watch, <laughs> my scuba pro scuba diving watch. This is a quartz watch. Of course, it does not have mechanical hands, but this functions the same. It just depends on whether it goes to mechanical hands or not. That um, what that has is a battery, which provides a small amount of power to a very, very, very tiny and very carefully shaped quartz crystal that actually looks like if you've ever seen a tuning fork and I'll just throw up a picture of a tuning fork there. Uh, but it's got that little, you know, <laughs> it looks like a fork, right? Like a, a bident, I guess, because it's only got two things. But that vibrates, like a tuning fork vibrates, right? You hit it and it goes, brrr, and you hear an A440 or something. Um, <clears throat> with a quartz oscillator, it actually oscillates at usually somewhere in the 32,000 beats per second. So it, it vibrates back and forth. Um, uh, interestingly enough, they, they picked that number one because it's an easy number for computers to deal with because uh, powers of two, right? So two to the fifth or two to the sixth is like 32,000. Um, <clears> but also because it's above human hearing. So a precursor to quartz watches was the uh, Astron, and I'm blanking on who made it. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think it was Bulova. Yeah, I think it was the Bulova Astron. And that actually had a literal, like, you could see it tuning fork, a little metal tuning fork. And you can actually purchase these now, both vintage and they've actually kind of re-released it. But anyway, that little guy would go, and you could actually hear it because it was vibrating in the human... Um, uh, you know, audible frequency range and some, some thousands of Hertz, as opposed to multiple, like tens of thousands of Hertz. So that's a really cool thing. And by the way, if anybody wants to buy me an Astron, I would love that. Cause what a cool watch that would be, right? That's, that's like a piece of history there. So it's like kind of slotted in right between traditional mechanical watches and quartz watches in the late sixties, the, the Astron uh, came about. And so that's a super, super cool watch, but you can actually hear that tuning fork going. So essentially the higher the beat, uh, the frequency of the beats. So as you go from five times a second ish up to let's say 2000 times a second for an Astron, something like that. I'll post the exact number of it. I can't remember offhand. Um, but as you move up, you become more accurate. And then of course you get to a quartz watch, which has 32,000. And then there's like high accuracy quartz watches, which I think are up in the 96,000, you know, beats. So the faster it's vibrating, the less any individual offbeat will make a difference, right? So if you have five beats per second and one of them is off, that's going to throw your, your timing off pretty well. If you have 32,000 beats per second and one of them is off by a little bit, it really is inconsequential. Uh, but anyway, the way that a quartz watch works is it actually has a little tiny computer chip that's in there counting. And so it, it hears <laughs> the oscillation of the quartz watch going, the quartz crystal going like do 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 do. And it just counts and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, right up to 32,000, which is what computers are good at. They just count. And when it gets to that, it sends a uh, signal to a mechanical motor that goes click and it moves the, the second hand once. And then and that's in, I mean, obviously <laughs> in a digital watch, it sends a signal and it says, make the little second counter go up. In a mechanical watch, it would just be the, the second hand would go. So that's why quartz watches go tick, 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 like that. And mechanical watches go tick, 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 right? So anyway, and then there are other escapements. There is uh, the, um, the lovely, amazing <clears throat> Omega coaxial escapement which uh, reduces friction by having no sliding of the pallets against the, the, the uh, sapphire pallets against metal. So it reduces the need to have oils and stuff, which means that the escapement lasts much longer than a traditional Thomas Mudge escapement. That was invented by George Daniels, I believe. Um, I think he actually invented it way back in the 70s, but it took until the late 90s before Omega released the first like commercial version of that. And then on the other end of things is uh, Seiko and their spring drive. And that is a super cool thing. That actually has, um, it just has a spring, but it has, uh, it, essentially what happens is the the, uh, it, it creates a like a flywheel type motion, which then creates power for the um, for the escapement and the, the second hand just kind of just goes. It doesn't have a tick, 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 tick motion. It just it goes. And what happens is that there is then a quartz oscillator in the circuit, which is 
going like, oh, whoa, you're going too fast. And so it puts on a brakes using an electromagnet. So as this plate is spinning through the electromagnet, it kind of turns up and down the uh, voltage on the electromagnet, which then causes the second hand to slow down. And so it's a mechanical watch, which is completely controlled by a quartz oscillator, a very high quality quartz oscillator. And so, you know, this watch runs somewhere around five seconds a day fast. It's pretty close to that, maybe four seconds, something like that. Uh, just a standard quartz watch might run 15 seconds a month fast. Uh, something like a Seiko spring drive with the high quality that they have is a fully mechanical watch with that quartz oscillator and it might it might be 10 to 15 seconds a year. So it's it's impressive what you can do. Of course, <laughs> a Seiko spring drive is also five to $10,000. So, um, you know, you, you have to pay for that sort of quality. Of course, there is the irony of all of this now is that I have like my cell phone or something or a computer and all of those have, um, they have quartz controllers inside of them which keep reasonably accurate time but where things get really cool is they sync up with GPS or with some other with the Wi-Fi usually is it, anyway it's connected up to atomic clocks in the end of it all and so the atomic clocks speaking of vibration frequencies those are usually cesium atoms or something and they're vibrating back and forth and it's counting those in the billions of vibrations per second and so again that's why atomic clocks are more accurate because they are vibrating so so quickly that any individual mistake just gets lost right <laughs> so those things are accurate to within uh, oh gosh i mean i think it's like a second per million years or something some insane number like that um so anyway so that's the reason why you think your your cell phone and your Apple Watch and your computer and all that stuff, you're like, wow, it has perfect time. Well, they actually don't have perfect time at all. If you disconnect them from the internet and let them run a few days, you will actually realize that the, the quartz oscillators inside of these things are not that good. They, they start to gain and lose seconds really rapidly. And if anybody's as old as I am again, you'll remember the fact that before we had these kind of uh, uh, automated um, time updates that computers were actually rather poor at keeping track of time that you had to reset them pretty consistently to keep them from drifting way way off um, so anyway that's uh, maybe way longer of an answer uh, so anyway a traditional escapement pallet fork two little uh, usually I think three or four uh, sapphires uh, sapphire crystals they hit these gears these met metallic gears that causes a release of power in the first place so it'll hit the fork which then hits this uh, other little crystal on the uh, hairspring forces it around that gets you know it gets wound up then it swings back around again hits it knocks it the other direction so the gear is escaping which is the reason why it's called an escapement right so it's trying to lose power and this thing's controlling how quickly it can do that so that's the basics of it so you've got the standard Thomas Mudge version uh, or Swiss lever escapement I think is what it's called now You've got the coaxial escapement, which I think is pretty exclusively Omega. Uh, you've got the Seiko spring drive, which is exclusively Seiko. Then you've got quartz watches, and then you've got high-end quartz watches, and then you can jump to things like um, atomic clocks that are vastly, vastly superior. Uh, just as a super small side note, which is a little bonus fact for everybody, if we did not have atomic clocks and the kind of crazy accuracy that we do, our GPS would not function hardly at all. Uh, GPS, the, uh, you've got satellites, uh, man, maybe <laughs> I should do a whole separate video on this, but just a super quick thing. So you've got the Earth here, right? And then you've got satellites, and essentially what you're doing is triangulating these satellites are sending signals down with time and your little GPS unit or your phone or whatever it is, it's amazing how small these things can be nowadays, but it reads the time signal and the location signal from all of these satellites. And so they say, this is the time it is, this is when I'm sending the signal, and they beam this down and it gets to your receiver. The receiver then figures out all this stuff, does some, some math, and it goes like, aha, I'm here. It's, it's actually intersecting spheres how it does it. But without absolutely perfect time synchronization, um, it wouldn't work at all. And it's such perfect time synchronization that actually it proves Einstein's theory of general relativity because time actually is faster at the, uh, at the altitude that the satellites are than down on Earth because it's further from the Earth's gravity well. So talk about crazy stuff. <laughs> you have to keep adjusting every single day. All of the GPS satellites have to adjust their clocks so that it matches with the Earth's clock. 
uh, or else we'd start to drift and you'd be driving into lakes and things like that all the time. So, you know, if your GPS gives you bad directions once in a while, you can curse it out, but it's, wow, that's cool stuff. So anyway, small little bonus fact that you get on, on top of all this. So I, um, I'll i check just pro forma. I will check just to make sure that I'm correct, but I don't think this is going to be an issue. So just a second, I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> so let's take a look at what Wikipedia has to say. An escapement is a mechanical linkage in mechanical watches and clocks that gives impulses to the timekeeping element and periodically releases the gear train to move forward, advancing the clock's hands. I don't think I answered it quite that succinctly, but <laughs> definitely got it. <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and especially make sure you ask questions in the comments, or you can also ask questions via direct email to drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Uh, and my wife will check those, and she writes things down, and I answer them live, and we see how it goes. Thanks, I'll see you next time. <laughs>